Thanks to Connell Tire for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And today we'll be taking a tour of the Hoopty fleet with a lot of projects getting started, like my 1968 Charger. And we are closing the book on a few things, but first we are going to talk Corvettes and the fact that my 2023 Corvette Z06 has already become obsolete thanks to the new hybrid V8 Corvette E-Ray, which is faster and better in about every performance segment, but it's probably a Corvette you shouldn't buy. But first, thanks to Continental Tire for sponsoring this portion of this video. And my old diesel here just got a new set of Continental Extreme Contacts, DWS 06 Plus. Now the old set of Continentals I had on my car still showed very little wear and they looked great, but they were 12 years old. And as I've learned from recent experience, you sure want to check the date codes on your tires to make sure they haven't aged out. Continental Tire is a premium tire brand with a focus on the smart choice in tires. One key element that sets them apart is their total confidence plan, which provides an industry leading warranty. Once you purchase a set of tires, all you have to do is register your tires in the total confidence plan and you get a lot of great benefits. These benefits include road hazard coverage. Continental will replace your damaged tires for free within the first 12 months of purchase, along with their limited warranty. If your tires become unserviceable within the first 12 months, they'll replace them for free. Continental covers replacements on select products up to 80,000 miles. And if you're not happy with your purchase, they will replace your tires with Continental brand tires in the first 60 days. You also get flat tire roadside assistance where you can get a flat change and a spare installed or a tow if needed for free up to 150 50 miles in the US and Canada 24 seven pre-registration is required as well as emergency trip interruption coverage. If you have a mechanical breakdown during your road trip, they'll help cover eligible expenses. Once again, pre-registration is required. Visit continentaltire.com slash warranty to see for yourself. Restrictions and limitations apply. See complete coverage and details at continentaltire.com slash warranty. So have total confidence in your next tire purchase just like me by purchasing a set of Continental tires and registering for the total confidence plan. Now, thanks so much to Continental Tire for sponsoring that part of my video. Now back to my regular content. So my Z06 ownership has been absolutely flawless, but I haven't driven it that much yet. Only about 250 miles on it because I was in Vietnam for two weeks and the holidays and all that. Uh, but now I'm back, determined to get there quickly because I have to hear this marvelous flat plane crank V8 sing to 8,500 RPM. It already sounds glorious with a restricted 7,000 RPM, but now it's slower-ish than the new E-Ray. So the new E-Ray is a hybrid mid-engine Corvette. It has the wide body appearance like the Z06, but it gets the normal C8 engine. 495 horsepower in the back, but then you get an electric battery and a motor in the front, powering the front wheels for an additional 160 horsepower. I can't do the math, but it's something like 650 horsepower, and you get the world's first all-wheel drive Corvette that can smoke this thing to 60, supposedly, and in a quarter mile as well. But Corvette's billing it as more of a grand touring car and not a track-focused car like the Z06. It's also a lot cheaper. It starts at $104,000, the Z06, well, quite a bit more. This one specced out to over $150,000. So, on paper, it seems like a much better car, a much better buy, but I wouldn't personally buy one of those for a few reasons. First of all, it's expensive, $104,000 for the Grand Touring Corvette, the car that's supposed to be in between the base Corvette and the Z06. It's much closer to the Z06 in price, and I think that will hurt it in the long run if you're going to keep the car for a long time. Also, a lot of these electric hybrid sort of GT based cars haven't had the best resale value. I'm thinking of the McLaren GT and some others and the hybrids, well, a little iffy as well. If you think of the original Acura NSX up until the last few years, it was very difficult to sell one of those, but now the Type S is selling for way over its MSRP. So I could certainly be wrong, but I'm thinking down the road, 10 years from now, five years from now, with this battery technology and it all being pretty new, you'll see a situation similar to what the hypercar holy 
Trinity owners are dealing with, the Ferrari LaFerrari, the Porsche 918 Spyder, and the McLaren P1. The one I rode in, Craig Jackson's, just had its battery changed, and it was a very, very expensive prospect, something like $200,000 to replace the battery. Similar with the uh, Ferraris as well. I don't know about the 918 Spyder. Obviously, replacing a battery on an E-Ray won't be that expensive more than the whole car, but imagine it's $50,000. Say it's similar to a Ford Lightning or a domestic battery-powered car. Even a Tesla right now, about $30,000. That is going to be a big, big expense when the car gets older and it will scare off a lot of buyers, I think. In General Motors land, there's one prime example of this and that's the GMC Yukon Hybrid, the Tahoe Hybrid. Those cars don't bring nearly the same money as a normal Tahoe or Yukon, even though they were more expensive because people don't want to mess with it. The Mercedes S400 Hybrid, another car practically worthless compared to say an S600 V12, which obviously way less efficient, but held its value much, much better. So I'm gonna stick to my Z06 for that reason. Even though the E-Ray is very fun and very cool, I imagine it's going to be like a volume knob where they slowly turn the car up and the E-Ray, the first version of the hybrid, will be, well, not as exciting as whatever comes out. Will the ZR1 be all-wheel drive and a hybrid? Will it be forced induction and mechanical all-wheel drive? Well, we'll see. But the one thing I am absolutely jealous of is the color choices for 2024, and that is Riptide Blue. I never thought I would be saying that again. I had an Escalade in that color. This one is a lot more blue, though, than my old Escalade. Would have matched the Nassau Blue 427 really, really well. So that's my thoughts on the new E-Ray, but now we're going to start the tour of all of my cars currently in the fleet, starting with the garage, then we'll head to the car wizards, then the hangar, and then the barn. I still have that as well. So I'm certainly long overdue for getting this car off of the lift and comparing it to the Z06 because there are some similarities. This is the first Stingray and this is the current Stingray. And the biggest similarity, obviously, is in the interior with the vertical stacked controls there. Same goes with the shifter. When you go inside of an old Corvette, you can see it's vertically mounted as well, the radio and the controls. So very, very cool homage to the old there. The 66 427 is just such a gorgeous car in Nassau blue. This is the first year of the 427 with the big bump in the hood here to make room for the big block. Absolutely love the car. I sort of wish the Z06 was riptide blue to match, and that's the last time I'll say that, I promise. But the hypersonic gray is absolutely gorgeous in any light. Other cars in the garage, 2008 Mercedes. Mercedes SLR McLaren still doing great, but due for its annual service, so that'll be coming up soon. Above it, the Targa again, back from Arkansas, as you saw in the last video. I have been driving it a lot every day this week, but the weather is turning cold, and I thought, well, it's going to stay cold for a while, so we'll just put it up on the rack since the Corvette is down. The Aston Martin Vanquish. It is a 2003. It is the Car Trek Vanquish that I bought from Tavares, who bought from Ed Bolian. And I haven't driven this car as much as I thought I would. I mean, I love that it's the James Bond spec and I do really enjoy driving it when I do, but I'm thinking, do I make it a manual transmission? You have to ship it off to England and it is very expensive, something like $50,000 to do, but the car goes up in value, at least that, if not more. Plus I can pick it up in England and tour around in it. So I'm mulling that over in my head. I did email them and they do have March availability for that. So that would be pretty cool. Below is the Bentley Azure, formerly owned by Jean-Claude Van Damme. It is still running great, 67,000 miles. The Murcielago as well. Running very good. I've had this car for three years now. Getting close to that. It has to be there, getting close. Bought this with a bad transmission from Ed Bullion, fixed it up, and it has been a mostly very reliable car. Above it, the F355. 1996 355 Spider that the Wizard completed an engine out, belt service on last year. Haven't driven it as much as I thought as well. So anyway, it's still gonna stick around. I don't wanna sell it. There's really not much that I wanna sell, but there is one car that I did let go of, and that is the 74 Carrera, orange crush with the turbo motor, owned by my friend Rob before that. And after finishing Targa again, well, I decided I didn't want to do the same thing to Orange Crush, go through all of it again, uh, spend all of that money, and then wish I had a 930 Turbo. That was the one cool car my dad had when I was growing up. The previous owner before my dad had a photo shoot with it, uh, but my dad sold it uh, right before I reached driving age, really smart, and that car 
I just think about it all the time, how much I want a 930. And if I'm gonna spend all that money on a turbo car, it should probably be a wide body car. So Leonard of the 911 Den, who actually made this target a target again, is going to pick up uh, where I left off and he's going to build it on his own time. You can follow it on his YouTube channel, I'm sure. Uh, the rest of the cars are outside because we're filming. Now you saw my green 84 Mercedes 300 SD earlier. It is doing great. I'm putting tires on it, doing some fixes to get it out of mothballs and start using it again. The Audi S5 is going into the carnages soon for a bunch of work, but the good news is the transmission is fine. Being a little low on fluid is all it needed to stop making that noise and the additives, so the transmission is savable, which is great. So we don't have to do the transmission, but we do have to do the clutch, fix the oil leaks, fix the suspension issues, do some brakes. There's still a lot to do, unfortunately, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Behind it, the Chevy Explorer van. This is the MVP for family road trips and towing because it's a three-quarter ton chassis. It needs to get to the car wizards, though, because the bed is stuck down. I can't get it up unfortunately. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the Maserati Levante still has its come forcer tires on it, but cleaned up from Car Trek, doing great. The Escalade is still the truck that I drive the most. It has the car seat in it right now, making the school run. The Ferrari 456 with its gated manual transmission, it is doing just fine as well. Man, this color just looks really good. In the dawn's early light here, but we are going to move on and head over to the Car Wizards and check on the projects up there. The 68 Charger is supposedly being torn apart, so I definitely want to see that. Yes, two Corvette chassis with Mag Ride. There's Wizard XLR, and there's, well, there's the lovely Car Wizard. Lovely? Yes. Maybe to some. Well, uh, you're staring at that. It's a yeah, I just had Mexican, and I'm thinking I might duplicate oh that. Oh, my situation. God. Okay, so is that the oil pan from the 440 there? Yeah, that actually is. The gasket was leaking. We were replacing it, and got to take the windage tray off. But we found out, we got your differential out to verify the ratio. Oh, yeah, let's go look. Yeah. <clears throat> so it had the 323 tag on it. Yep. And I was doing some research about differential ratios and what to swap it to, and... Uh, went to a 4B bodies only, which is what this is for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was already a post about this car and me. They absolutely hate me there. Why do they hate you? The Superbird. Oh, the Superbird? I don't know. However, I handled the Superbird, and apparently they thought it was fake, and I'm a fake. They thought I staged the tire blowing on this car on the highway at night. No. Because the, the rim wasn't damaged, so why is the rim so clean? It, it, anyway, it's... That was a real super it's, it's weird. I left just because I, I don't have time to deal with that nonsense. But, uh, I, yeah. Um, anyway, some grumpy old men there. But, anyway. Hi. Uh, yeah, so what's the differential verdict here? So, it had the tag over here that said 323. But yeah. I was worried they changed the gears out but didn't mess with the tag. But it is correct. It says right there, 3.23. Okay. So... You think this is how the car was? I mean, really screaming at 4,000 RPM at 70 miles an hour? Yeah, because back in the day, they didn't have overdrive. And the way they went about getting better highway ratios was with the rear end. They'd have 276 or something in here. Chevys had 273s. Because I had 66 <clears throat> Imperials. I've had a couple of those. Yeah. One on the channel, same motor, and it didn't scream on the highway. They probably had the, the gear ratio for the highway. So I'm either swapping transmissions or swapping differentials. Yes. And if I swap differentials, then it'll be slower. It'll lose acceleration, that's for sure. Hmm. Okay. Well, not sure yet. Not sure. Well, we got other things to do while you make up your mind. So we got, okay. you, we got your brakes fixed. Just like I said, they needed adjusted. We got everything nice and tight on there, and the brakes feel really good. Okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. I can't wait to drive it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are other projects in the garage. One of them, well, I'm not gonna go into detail yet because I'm gonna do an in-depth video. But just a little hint, speaking of, is the Jaguar any progress here on the craziness? We found some wiring issues also with the cluster and also the, the bus that runs several different items on the car. There's a short somewhere. There's two wires, one of them is short-circuited, so Jag. that's gonna take a lot of digging. So basically, the swap to make this a Safari 911 Turbo, this beat-up X Las Vegas rental 911 Turbo, it has started. And here's a little hint. All the front suspension off, shocks on. But I'm gonna do more of an in-depth build video, more or less start to finish on this thing. So I don't wanna show you too much because 
makes sense to do it all there. But uh, mm -hmm. moving on, my Mustang, I wanted to make it more civilized and it absolutely refused. So you had to put in all the old clutch stuff back, right? Yeah, we put it back like the way it was. Okay. So it's going to be a full-blown race car. There are some adjustments to do. I am going to put in windows, though I have sore some to where that will be a little better and it doesn't make it any less of a race car if it has side windows because you roll them down when you yeah. drive. So anyway, um, that's fine. But next to it, the Silver Arrow, which I had up here because the top didn't work, which is interesting because on Bring a Trailer when this car sold uh, six, eight months ago, they had just redone all the hydraulics on the top. Yeah, you were worried the convertible top didn't work and all it was was the defrost connector needs to be disconnected before it'll proceed. You unplug the defroster and then it just pops up. Mm -hmm. So. That's all it was. How could I forget? I mean, anyway. We did service it. It's all ready to go. So that Okay. Was and then there's the CTSV that is sold to another YouTuber, but he needs to come pick it up. He I wonder. Come pick it up. Yeah. Yes. Has, has he forgotten? He said the money and then he just forgets. He's a very busy YouTuber. I suppose. Yes. Well, I'm going to move on, Wizard. I have other cars to go check on. Okay. And. Danielson's back from lunch. Yep. Yes, out of one garage and into another. Well, the Hoopty hangar, actually, where a lot of cars are stored, starting with the 49 Cadillac. And let's see, it just had some work to fix some leaks. Is it staying dry? Yes, it is. Because it's American. It's not British, so it doesn't continually leak. The Ferrari 599 is about to go down for a manual conversion, that beautiful Venus of paint. But it's also leaking a little bit from the valve covers. Last time I drove it, uh, I could smell it a little bit burning on the exhaust very much. An Italian thing. This hangar, while it's not mine, really has been a godsend to store some hoopties. Some of the cars in here aren't mine, though. Of course, the golf cart isn't. Uh, but the Countach is in its winter hibernation right now. But uh, no issues, hopefully. The three cars behind it are not mine. But the Z8 most certainly is. And we had our first anniversary not that long ago with this car. It was one of the BMW Dream Team vehicles. The only one that I kept put on Alpina wheels. And every time I drive it, I just absolutely love the car the closest thing to it really is the jag e-type it has the same kind of driving experience of course in a much more modern car of course the e-type just came back from the car wizards and it refuses to quit leaking i saw you on the comments when i put out this video and thank you for the show of support with this car still not sure if i'm going to restore it yet because it does look so nice as is and it is not leaking that much i mean just when i park it just put a little cardboard down and it catches all that, no problem. But a big leaker, the biggest leaker here in the garage is certainly the Jurassic Park Jeep. It is hemorrhaging transmission fluid and I need to get it up to the car wizards. I'm gonna have to tow it to get that fixed, unfortunately. I really haven't driven it since the car trek last year where we took it up the mountain. I haven't even washed it, so really neglecting that car, unfortunately. Same with the 85 500SL. That was my first car. My grandmother got this car new and gave it to me when I was 16. She passed away a few years ago, and so it's kind of sad for me to drive it still. I just, I need to get past this block, though, because it's also my wedding car. I can make new memories with this car. It's a lifetime car for me. So I do need to quit neglecting it. The SLS AMG, still one of the MVPs of the group. It needs to go in for its annual oil change, but otherwise, no issues. This thing has been rock solid, reliable. Gullwing wing doors, just amazing on this car. Love the combo of Dezenio Mystic White and the natural leather interior. The SL, this is not mine, but certainly gorgeous. And I really, really have a connection to these because uh, that's what I drove in Italy along with the 300 SL Gullwing. wing. So when I see this, I think back to basically the best trip of my life. So anyway, that's some of the cars in the Hoopty hangar. The only other place where there's some cars is the old barn that I've had for many, many years. But this is the last few days before I do finally give it up. So let's go there. <laughs> yep. It's time to say goodbye to the Hoopty barn that I've rented for the last five years or so when overflow parking at the first Hoobie's garage. Uh, well, it got a little extreme for the neighborhood. This is only a mile from my old house and it's been very handy to have, but now with the hangar, I really don't need it. And you can see I only have three cars in here because it's underutilized, including the million mile Dodge Ram, which I did have the rust sort of band-aid fixed just because I didn't want it to get 
worse. This truck's just too handy to have around, so I haven't gotten rid of it. I've actually gotten quite a bit of use out of this thing. Just love the truck. It's about a million two hundred thousand miles now. Originally an oil field hotshot truck, and now, well, just a beater truck for me. Apollo 911 is right here, and well, it's doing great. That puddles from a different car. So nothing to worry about there because it is an Ellis swapped 911. I do have it on a battery tender though, so we can get it out of here. And then there is the beautiful 1996 Buick Roadmaster, which I said six months ago now that I would make a decision on whether to get rid of my green diesel or the Roadmaster, because these are both cars from my past, and well, I still haven't made a decision yet. Maybe I never will. So anyway, that is the fleet as of now. Some goodbyes, some hellos incoming, and goodbye, Hoopty Barn. Thank you so much for watching.